So welcome back to London for not a theme park weekend, something very different to HM on HM Coasters. It is our second love. I am of course talking about musical theatre. And after two years of waiting, we are back in central London for West End Live. It is going to be an amazing event. I really can't wait. I came with my mum in 2019 and it was absolutely fantastic. But it's Ian's first. You're a West End Live virgin, at virgin, aren't you? <laughs> My first time here, I think you meant to say. <laughs> Just not Ian's first. No, his first time here. He's a West End Live virgin. Yeah, yeah. What are you looking forward to? Just seeing all the shows, to be honest. See, seeing ones I've not even considered going to, yeah. which will be nice. And seeing the Queens, of course, from six. Yeah, they're on. They're closing day one tomorrow. Yeah and they're on again on day two yeah as well, they're halfway they? through day two because six currently isn't on in, in the west, west end we'll take you over to the its new home in a second but it's on tour still it's still on tour so if you can get your ticket but yeah it's gonna be and being out at a live event yeah will be nice just hopefully we'll get a good spot it's an, ah, early, start. It's an early start it's a really early start but Hopefully we'll, do it. we'll get a good spot, or rather yeah. the spot Heather wants. The spot I want. Um, it's, but it's not the best spot because we're not trying to get at the front. Oh no, we, no, we, we won't. We won't be getting it. We're getting here reasonably early. But not as early. But not as, as early as some. Um, yeah. But obviously there will be separate West End live vlogs coming to the channel. We're going to take you on a little bit of a tour in this vlog so we'll film it over two days we'll film it tonight and we'll film some on monday night as well and maybe a little on, on saturday night when we're outside the theater we're going to well yeah we are going to the theater on um tomorrow night so we'll take you to the first theater one thing you will find in london is ian correct pret a manger are on pretty much every street corner aren't they and even opposite to each other at literally. some point literally yeah so we are heading to our first theatre which is the Haymarket not far from Trafalgar Square and that is currently home to or it was home because I think it's finished now correct me if I'm wrong but it was home if still not home to Heather's The Musical now I saw it during its first West End run and to be honest I wasn't impressed I'm music and the cast great don't get me wrong but i'm not a fan of the storyline it's one that you've not seen no i've not seen it. and they are closing the weekend on sunday uh-huh so we will be seeing one of our one a lady we've seen as the one queen. of one of our former queens of six jodie Steele is heather chandler um if you don't know the breakdown of heather's we'll tell you when we get to the theater so welcome to our first stop on our West End Theatre Tour. It is of course the Haymarket. Now I might have embarrassed myself a little bit. Heather's the Musical has actually finished and in its play will be Only Fools and Horses, the musical. Oops. <laughs> but always do your research. Always do your research, kid. But you're you're a fan of the TV show, aren't you? Well, I know it. Right? Yeah. I don't know how quite you can do a musical from it, well, but you know. Like, yeah. It's an interesting concept, but yeah. who'd have thought you could make a musical about those six wives of Henry VIII? Well, there you go. So, yeah, this, I'm, I haven't done my research coming into this, as you can tell. Um, but yeah, Only Fools and Horses, don't know when it starts, but it's a really, really nice, no, it doesn't, does it? No. But it's a really, really nice old theatre. It's quite quaint here. Um, there's not a lot of leg room for those tall people. Glad we're not here then. Um, so you are, it is quite a compact theatre, but it's really, really nice. So we're gonna go over the road to the theatre that we're going to tomorrow night. It is, of course, Her Majesty's currently home to one of the West End's longest running musicals that I am of course talking about, The Phantom of the Opera. Now this was the first musical I ever saw as a kid 
and it's the show that got me into musical theatre. Ian's never seen it, have you, Ian? No, I don't think we should go across the road. No, no we, we won't be going across the road at the second because there is an ambulance in front of the theatre. Yeah. Right, so what have we got, Ian? Okay, now Five Guys. We've just come into Five Guys and well, we ordered lots. Right, what have we got to eat, Ian? Hi guys. Well, we only ordered fries, so we thought, oh, we'll get two large. Big mistake. Well, that's the large. That's Heather's large. Take. Trinity! Right, where are we, Ian? What are we eating? Hi guys. But me, both me and Heather didn't fancy burgers or anything, so we thought, just get fries. So we'll get a large fries each. So there's mine, there's Heather's, and here's what's left in the bag. Please tell me that's recorded. <laughs> that might have been a mistake. Yeah. But we are both very, very hungry. I was going to say, it's a good job we're hungry. But yeah, if you come to London, come into Five Guys, and you've got your freestyle coats as well. Ian's on his second. Yeah. <laughs> I think they know what coat looks like. So how was your Five Guys mayo? I don't know, I've not got into it yet. The uh, ketchup's were fine. Ketchup's really nice. We'll see, we'll watch Ian get into the mayo. Because apparently it's Heinz, but it's Five, Five guys. guys mayonnaise. So I don't know what's different about that. Unless of course it's a, oh yeah, it's an American mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. So if we go by um, Charlotte, it is going to be rank. Yeah, it's fine. It's just it's not it's not Hellman's or Heinz, but yeah, normal Heinz. That is. Yeah. So yeah, we are going to enjoy all our fries and see you at the next theatre. 17 hours later, I'm still eating. And... Is there still milk? There's still more in there. <laughs> Jeez, viewers, help us out here. What have we done? <laughs> Comment below, are we stupid? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have a nice walk. <coughs> Pardon me. Show you around some more theatres in a bit. So our next theatre is the Lyric and it's changed since we were last here. Where's all this purple gone? The sparkly purple has gone to the Vaudeville. Wherever that is. It's on the Strand so we'll head over to the Vaudeville in a bit. Um, but yeah this is the Bob Marley musical again yet to be opened. First of, of first of October. It does actually say for this one. For world premiere 1st of October. I've just said, why did he not <laughs> tell you what date they're opening and this one? It's up. there. World premiere New Musical opens the first. But yeah, it's, it's Bob Marley music, which we don't, I don't know whether it's the life of Bob Marley, we don't know that much about it. Um, it's been kept very, very quiet, but yeah. Last time we were here, this was all purple yeah. and sparkly. But obviously, as I said, six has moved to the Vaudeville. Again, not open. 29th of September, does it open? Yes. yes. Yeah. 20 day, 8, 4, 29. Yeah. yeah. As I said, obviously, the, the Queens will be at West End Live both days. So we're going to get footage of the Queens at West End Live over both days. So we, hopefully. hopefully. Um, but yeah, there are some theatres obviously, everybody talking about Jamie, the film has been released today on Amazon, go and check it out if you've got Amazon. I wasn't a fan of the musical, I'll have to say it quite quietly while we're outside the theatre, but the film I've got to say is really, really enjoyable. Richard E. Grant is just absolutely hilarious, but while we're here, this show actually closes for 2021, the end of September. Yeah. 
which is why they're not on West End which Live. Which is why they're not at West End Live. Um, but yeah, we'll come and talk more about Jamie on Sunday or Monday. Well, it's a little bit quieter when the theatre's shut. So the next theatre along the line is the Gilgood Theatre. Now this is a nice theatre on the corner. This is where myself and Ian two years ago, coming up for two years now, isn't it? Yeah. Came to see the Les Mis stage concert. It was such a phenomenal show, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was brilliant. And it sounds sad, but I, I love the sound design of it. Yeah. I love the lights design of it. I mean, I was sad enough to sit because we were in the stalls but under the balcony, yep. under the circle. I was counting how many speakers were above us. He was. <laughs> I love sound design. Yeah. And it was just nice to, I was saying, why is there so many speakers? And then right when the gunshots went off, I worked out why there were yeah. so many speakers. So yeah. it's to give you the, well, I think there was 27 speakers. I is that count. what you counted in the end? Yeah, but I couldn't see them all. Yeah. Uh, you know, when a gunshot goes off, you can rebound it all over the theatre that way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it's a really nice theatre. Yeah, and for those of you that are interested, we don't know what's on at the second, but it's... It's, 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 um, it's uh, from, the, from the Wolf Hall trilogy. So it's the first, it's the world premiere of um, Mirrors and Lights. Cool, yeah. And, mantle. and for those of you that are interested, To Kill a Mockingbird should have started last year, but it has been postponed due to COVID. But obviously no cast has been announced for it. I think the main character had been announced. Yeah. I can't remember who it was that was meant to be playing it. But I'm still praying for Stark Sands to come over and reprise his role that he played on Broadway. The next theatre in line is the Sun Time Theatre, which is currently home to Les Miserables. Um, again, we'll probably do that Sunday or Monday because it's short then. So yeah, we'll see you at the next theatre. So the next theatre on our stop this evening is the Palace Theatre on the corner of Shaftesbury Avenue currently home to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I apologise for the screaming. <laughs> There's a party bus behind us. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, because we're in the centre of London, we're walking quicker than it and it keeps catching, it's catching us up. catching us up. But yeah, this obviously we thought we'd have to come and pay a visit to this theatre. Heather, this is for you. We know your love for Harry Potter is huge. So bigger than those fries were. It's bigger than the fries were. So with Harry Potter, it is a two part show. So you have a matinee and you have an evening. Yeah. It's quite long, isn't it? We've yeah. not seen it ourselves yet. Uh, it seems like a bit of a con to me that having, having two parts. Yeah. Well. You have to pay. You have to pay for two separate. So you pay more than you would normally pay for one show, basically. Um, I think we're going to leave this here, but we had to come and see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Oh, they're gone now. Oh, they're gone. It's all right. For Heather, we don't know when this reopens. It's pretty soon, though, no, didn't pretty you soon, say? Yeah. It's one of the last to reopen. Um, but yeah, this is the lovely Palace Theatre. I actually, I actually saw Priscilla Queen of the Desert and Les Miserables here. It's really nice. So yeah, we're going to take you down to the Shaftesbury Theatre and pay a visit to Anne Juliet. So next up, we are at another show that is yet to reopen. And that is one of our favourites here at HM Coasters. We are now at the Shaftesbury Theatre. You can't see it because it's behind, but we'll, 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 we'll take back. you around the other side so you can see the massive sparkly Anne Juliet side. This is a really, really good show. So if you don't know what Anne Juliet is all about, Ian, Sorry. what are you doing? Lord and Master. He's David on about Bedella. David Bedella. Legend in the world of musical theatre and an absolutely fantastic performer. What? 
We're not doing silly accents. <laughs> That's the line from the show that cracks us up. But yeah, if you don't know the story behind Anne Juliet, it is of course a twist on Romeo and Juliet. What if Juliet hadn't died? Or Romeo. Or Romeo for that Romeo. matter. Um, but yeah, it, the cast is led by the gorgeous Miriam Teakley, who plays Juliet. Of course, one of my favourite West End actors, Oliver Thompson, as Shakespeare. And he's very funny, isn't he? Him and Cassidy Jansen together. Uh, yeah. yeah, they work really well together. <laughs> and there's a former queen in the show. Miss Grace Mowat, who is also first cover for Juliet. Um, but yeah, really, really fun, upbeat show. It's got the songs written by Max Martin. Again, if you're not familiar with Max Martin, he's written songs for Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, Kelly Clarkson, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber. All the, sorts of things. Yeah. The, um, rock band. <laughs> weekend. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. And the, the weekend. weekend. Katy Perry, the list is endless and you can hear all these songs in this fantastic show. We think it opens round about the 24th, don't yeah. we? Yeah, round about the 24th. Um, but yeah, we'll take you round the side in a sec. Another way you can get. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. But yeah, this is of course the logo for Anne Juliet. But we'll take you round and show you round the other side. It's a very, very busy night in London. It is, of course, Friday night. It's Friday night. Oh, yeah, Ian. Returns 24th of September. Duh, we should have just Ooh. read the sign. We're having fun. Oh, is this the extension they're having done? Oh, yeah, they're extending. When we were here, that we were reading the, that they were having a lot of work done. Yeah. There, so, this is the lovely Anne Juliet logo. And da, da, da. it's not on, obviously, but you can make out. It's absolutely beautiful when it's lit up, isn't it? It's, it's um, I wouldn't call it beautiful. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's um, eye-catching. Very yeah. eye-catching when it's on. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, to be honest. It's, yeah, it's very much like 60s, 70s chic. Yeah. You know, like, like all the um, old um, arcades had yes. as entrances. But as I say, if you like your pop music, uh, yeah. then put, then once the show reopens on the 24th of September, please, please, please come and give Anne Juliet your support. They're on tomorrow at West End Live, so we will get some footage of the wonderful cast for you. Have you noticed something about the, these hoardings? No. <laughs> what have you just noticed, Ian? I've got two cups of coke. Um, no, the, this hoarding along here has actually got doors in it. Yeah. Like here, there's a doorway. So over the top it says Grand Circle, stalls, yeah. box office. So this this building work's going to yeah. obviously continue, continue. while they're, um, the show is on. Yeah. And you're going to go through the hoardings to get into the theatre. Yeah. There's those of you that know as well, the, the, a show from Broadway, Be More Chill, has actually had a limited run here at the Shaftesbury. Did it? Two, two of our queens were in it. Were they? I don't know. Millie O'Connell and Grace took over from Millie. Uh -huh. And Millie went back into Rent at the Hope Mill Theatre in Manchester. Um, we're going to do one more theatre tonight. I really want to take you guys down onto the Strand so you can see the, ho the brand new home of uh, probably our favourite musical that is currently on in the West End and on a UK tour. Yes, you've guessed it. I am, of course, talking about We're One of a Kind, No Category. Yes, if I'm talking. Yes, I'm talking about Six, the musical. Let's go to the Strand. So we have arrived at the brand new home of Six, the musical. Again. Your girl's got a yeah. massive poster. So they've got all the alternates on the door. 
and the leads. And the main cast. On either side. So. Unfortunately, it's under scaffolding. It is under scaffolding. They're doing all the work. And I'm going to be really geeky now. If you can see inside, that is all of six. Six is stage, some of six is staging and lighting. So they're obviously prepping. prepping and getting ready for their 29th of September opening. As I said, it is probably what our favorite show now here at HM Coasters. So we will hopefully get footage of both days of the Queens at West End Live. Ian's just trying to see if he can see any sign of where, where in fact the per, the light sign could go. No, you can't see anything really. They're going to have to pull it up though, aren't they? You would think so, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So for those of you that don't know, the Vaudeville was home to the play that goes wrong. It's been home to several other plays as well. But as I said, from the 29th of September, Six the Musical takes its home here which we cannot wait to come down and see it yet again. See, it's got the ladies in waiting, of course the band. So yeah, what, what do you think about the theatre? Um, I don't know, because um, there's been a lot of Ferrari, for want of a better word, yeah. because there's no disabled toilet and there's very little little disabled access which for a show that's all about inclusion seems a bit strange and but, a very big hit in the west end yeah. at the minute as well you but maybe it was the only theater available for them to move to yeah you just don't know. you don't know but looking at it it looks very very small but for those of you that know the show know this no the show works better in a smaller theater um so yeah we're gonna leave Vaudeville Theatre and say goodbye to Six for now and head a few doors down to my personal favourite theatre here in London's West End on the Strand. I am of course, oh, helicopter. Police, I, helicopter, police helicopter. I am of course talking about the Adelphi Theatre. Now this theatre means a lot to me because it, it was home to my favourite show Kinky Boots until it closed January 2019. Uh, well so yes, this is probably my favourite theatre here in London's West End. It is the Adelphi Theatre. Why do you ask that? Well, it was home to my favourite musical, Kinky Boots, from 2018 to 2000, 2017. I beg your pardon, to 2019. We were of course here for the last showing in January of 2019 and it was so emotional. The backstage area, the stage door was rammed, packed with, with people and it was so nice for the camp. The show that took over from Kinky Boots here was of course The Amazing Waitress, music written by Sarah Bareilles. I've seen the show three times and Ian and I were lucky enough to see one of the last shows before lockdown last year, weren't we? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. With? With Sarah Bareilles and Crabby Creel. The show is very emotional. As I say, two of my favourite shows have been at this theatre. That's why it means an absolute lot to me. Um, will you want to see? I do want to see it, yeah. I want to, because I... As we've said, I love all the technical yeah. things about theatre. So I want to know how they do the, the car yeah. and how they do the lightning on the clock tower and things yeah. like that. I would love to see the magic tricks because there are yeah. magic tricks in that this. Because I know there are because the from things I've heard. So yeah. I would love just to come and geek out. Yeah. I mean it would be really good to see it. I mean, to be fair, the actors are pretty good as well. They yeah. don't look like Marty and um, Doc Brown. Yeah, well, you've seen the films, haven't you? I, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't seen... <laughs> Guys, we have to educate her. <laughs> you I, haven't seen I any... Haven't, I haven't 
seen any of the Bats of Future films. Oh, now that... Oh, don't give me abuse, no. guys, please. No, no, I haven't seen them because it's never but, been my sort of thing. Back to the Future, we have for, to blame, thank for people having the rights to their own images. Yeah. Because um, the person who played Marty's dad in the film, Marty. in the first film, never agreed to be in the, the other films and they included him anyway yeah. by using his a body double and um, superimposing his face on body that body double and think it was very technical because it was a Steven, Steven, Steven Spielberg you can tell I'm tired can't you folks but as you can see at the second the show is currently closed due to a cast member being ill we don't know whether it's Covid related they haven't said they've just said due to a cast member being ill the show is shut so they're meant to be opening West End Live on Sunday. Who knows? So who knows whether they will or not. If it, yeah. Hopefully they'll be able to put something on. Yeah, ho hopefully they'll be able to work on something. Um, At least they've got a few days to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So the Adelphi's closed. But we'll see you soon. Ian. We are back outside Her Majesty's Theatre. Yeah. And sharpens heightens each sensation. No, I won't <laughs> But yeah. yeah, we are back at Her Majesty's Theatre. The day after the night before. Yes. What did you make of the Phantom of the Opera? Uh, I know it's we won't come most news to people, but it's a fab show. Yeah. My first time Your to first see the time actual seeing. stage show. I've yeah. seen the film, obviously. Yeah. More than once. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Killian's performance as the Phantom. So good. So good. So good. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was great. And uh, to be fair, although some people would have said we had bad seats because we were up in the gods. We were up in the circle, weren't we? We were in the grand circle. Yeah. For me, it was brilliant. Because I love... Geek! Moment coming up, folks. I love looking at the stage and spotting all the trapdoors. I love looking at the um, chandelier, working it out before and pointing things out to Heather and Heather was going, oh yeah! And things to, like to, that. To be honest, give, it, give Ian his due. It was interesting seeing the chandelier hoist up. And, so yeah, give, give Ian his due on that. Yeah and point out where the safety features were yeah. and things like that and point out afterwards that part of the very first scene change went slightly wrong yes but yeah i really really enjoyed it i think i i, I we looked i looked out because i've had killian as my phantom my yeah first phantom. your first phantom and lucky and it, one of the reasons I enjoyed it is because Killian, this is slightly insulting to Killian. <gasps> His acting skills on emotions are not great. But for the Phantom, it's brilliant because yeah. it's just that bit disjointed, a bit <clears throat> different, which of course the Phantom is. Yeah. So he worked brilliant. He put lots of emotions in it. Yeah. But because he's not great at emotions, yeah. he made it even better as the Phantom. Yeah. Um, the rest of the tracks and cast were superb and yeah, I want to see it again. Me too. So, your feelings? It's, it was my first show seeing it years and years back in Manchester and it was the show that got me into musical theatre and to see it again after so long, I've seen it in the West End before with this, the legend that is John Owen Jones as the Phantom. Um, but to see to see one of my favourite West End performers at the second in his dream role, and he has come out and said it was his dream. It's always been his dream role, even though he's done the show before. He was Raoul. He said it's always been his dream to play the Phantom in the West End, and he's doing it. And I couldn't be more proud of him from that. 
from that actor that I saw for the first time was Charlie in Kinky Boots to that was my first seeing Killian on the show but then seeing him in Play Miz and now seeing him in Quantum of the Opera I, 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 I can't fault the guy again Ian's right with the emotions but with the Phantom it's it's how you describe this yeah it's 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 a disjointed character so that doesn't really matter it's voice it adds to it it adds to it it's voice i don't know what the hell has happened to his voice the the rest of the cast were brilliant by the way <laughs> don't think we're just praising killian because we're not the rest of the cast were brilliant but there's something about killian's voice that's changed and i don't know what he is i'm just reading uh, um, but yeah, the whole cast were brilliant. Um, I'm trying to get this. Lucy St. Louis. Um, I rated as Christine. But we put it down. Yeah, we. I didn't rate her. I thought she was very good. Yeah. I'm talking behind camera here. Yeah. But there was the odd note that she didn't get and she wasn't which, smooth with, but which, we put it down to. We put it down to them doing West End Live in the morning then coming straight back to the theatre for the matinee which we were really shocked about and then the evening as well there was pictures where Killian and Reese and others were off but again busy day for everyone in the West End yesterday with West End Live you know but most, most of the shows are, are, have Saturday matinees uh -huh. one more thing I want to say though Killian when he speaks, he's so broad, Irish. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Incredibly broad. When we, you'll see, probably, I think we got it. Did, in the did West we get Day. it? I'm not 100% sure because we've had a few problems with camera crashes. Go check out the West End Live vlogs. Anyway, he talks with such a broad Irish accent. How the hell he loses it for singing? Yeah. And talking, I don't know. But he does. But well, he did it for Kinky Boots as well. He had that broad Northampton accent in Kinky Boots. Um, but yeah, when you watch interviews with him, he's got that broad Irish accent, but it doesn't come out when he's on stage in a role. But as I say, go check out the West End Live vlogs if you haven't checked them out already to see what we mean, because we think we got the interview. Not 100% sure. Was it 18 months? Cool. About that, yeah. Oh, six, 15, 16 months. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is the touring production. They've now changed it, so um, it's, pretty, it's a smaller production, basically, but you've still got the chandelier, which is a major part, and we won't spoil for you. You've still got the classic, classic Andrew Lloyd Webber score, which is by the current cast is sung perfectly well. Now, I thought the seats were comfortable. Ian, on the other hand, wasn't too sure. They're not brilliant on leg room. No, they're not. We, we, we had aisle seats. So my legs so ended Ian's up in the aisle. Were out up in the air. But no, it's a really nice theatre and the show is amazing. So if you get the chance, come and see Phantom of the Opera here in London's West End. I mean, just look at the facade. It's this is the entrance we went to. It. 
it's a nice building. It, it, it's a nice design building. You can tell it's one of the older theatres here in the West End as well, just by its structure. So yeah, we're going to go on and move on to our next theatre, which we're going to head over to the Apollo to everybody's talking about Jamie. So welcome to our next theatre, it is the Apollo Theatre, currently home to everybody's talking about Jamie. Now everybody's talking about Jamie's based on a true story, it's about a 16 year old boy in Sheffield who Basically, as a lot of 16 year old kids do, it's actually taking a break. It finishes on the 29th of September, I believe. Yeah, this is a really nice theatre. I came to see the show when we were 20, beginning of 2019 um, and saw the wonderful Miss Art Michelle Pizard from RuPaul's Drag Race as the teacher. What's the, what's the theatre like? It's a really nice theatre, I can't remember much about it. It's quite an oldish theatre. Um, we were in the stalls, we were quite close to the stage. Seats are very leg roomy. It's important. Yeah, so there is a lot of, um, a lot of room for your legs. And those of you that don't know, if you have Amazon Prime, the film version of Everybody's Talking About Jamie has just been released. Starring, um, I don't know the guy's name that plays Jamie, but if you've seen the show, you'll recognise a couple of faces. The original Jamie, John McCree, has a little cameo in there, and a certain Miss Bianca Del Rio has a cameo as well. For those of you that don't know, Bianca did play the old time drag queen um, Chanel Loco, Loco Chanel. Everybody's talking about Jamie. Who is the male, the big male star in it? Richard E. Grant plays that um, role in the film. So, as I said, if you've got Amazon Prime, then do check it out because I personally think it's better than the show. Hmm, wonder what's on here. They've spent an awful spent lot, of a lot of money and time. Yeah, and that, that was one of the reasons that the, they moved the stage, the concert um, version next door to the Gilgod, so that they could do the work they needed on this theatre. And you'll have seen from Ian's outside, outside bit that it's absolutely stunning. It's just beautiful. If any of you ever come to see Lamey's, Please, please, please do let us know what the theatre is like because there's loads of theatres in the West End that we won't be able to cover in this video but hopefully we will come back and continue to do those theatres we haven't been able to cover. Well this is a bit odd but there we go. Why do they call put new musical under things. 
Because it is a brand new musical. Yes, but then they add a date to the sign. Well, yeah. Yeah, you've guessed it from the front of the theatre. This is home to the West End and Broadway get come from away. Again, it's a really nice theatre. Looks old. It is. A lot of, yeah, it is. It's not one of the modern theatres. It's quite small uh -huh. and unique, this one. Um, but again, it suits the show because um, it's, it's a show with no interval. Oh, it's another it's an an 80 minutes, or is it? Yeah, um, and it's quite a small cast as well. So I know the video is about theatres, but obviously we'll explain the shows as well. Those of you that don't know Come From Away, it's based around the after events of September the 11th. Um, Set in Newfoundland. New Newfoundland, a town called Gander. Um, and they take in stranded aeroplanes. 38 of them, apparently. 38 planes. Um, the show starts off with an amazing song called Welcome to the Rock, which I'm an Islander, I am an Islander, I'm an Islander, I am an Islander. But check out the West End Live vlog again for footage of the Come From Away cast performing that very song. If, if you're ever interested in stage dooring, which hopefully a lot of you do, not at the second yet, the stage door is literally that one. round the back. Oh, it's round the back? It's round the back. Um, but again, it, it's 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 perfect theatre for the show. This, this video is basically a guide for those of you that don't know London's theatres, and if you're ever planning a trip to London to come to the West End, it gives you a brief idea of which shows to visit, which shows are our favourites, um, and then obviously insight into the theatres as well. But again, it's a really nice, spacious theatre inside as well. And it's all like green and blues inside as well. It's really, really nice. Oh, it's just that little grey. And um, I didn't like No, you can't see that. I'll just have to let that one go. So, welcome to our last theatre in this video. It is, of course, the newly refurbished Theatre Royal Jury Lane. Reopened with the massive, massive Broadway hit. I am of course talking about Disney Frozen. Now, obviously, again, we've not, I've not been in since it reopened. I haven't been into this theatre for a very, very long time. Um, can't give you too much information about it. But as I said, it is currently home to Disney's Frozen, starring the amazing Samantha Barks as Elsa. Check out the West End Live vlog again for Frozen's performance from Saturday. But yeah, you've got, you can see how blue it is. No, they can't. They can't. I'll do, a, I'll do another shot of the side. But it's really blue and purple and just everything you expect from Frozen. 